The Nascar Amber World Truck Series heads the National Super Speedway, and we see Ryan Priest pick up the victory for the second year in a row. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. I just got done watching the Nascar Amber World Truck Series race from National Super Speedway, the Rackley Roofing 200. We've got a lot to talk about from it. Let's go and talk about the race. So, for the green flag drop in this race, there was a little bit of drama. So, the 14 and Matt Gutierrez and the 22, so Dre Hutchins and Matt Gutierrez, would both unfortunately end up failing, basically unfortunately failed post-qualifying inspection. Also, Derek Cross had a poverty amount of ballast. He would lose 10 points in the crew chief. Gutierrez would go to the rear of the field due to this, and Trey Hutchins would basically unfortunately get disqualified for the race, meaning that Chase Chains would get into the race and start it off. So on the start of the race, you have Ryan Priest the floor from the outside and Zane Smith on the inside. We see Tanner Gray basically stop on pit road at the start of the race due to basically improper feeling before the great flag, and he would have to stop as he took up the green flag. Then Zane Smith got a really, really good start of the race, and he was able to take the race lead from Ryan Priest. We then saw the first incident race happen between Matt Crafton and Jack Wood. Jack Wood kind of unfortunately came down on Matt Crafton, and Matt Crafton unfortunately made contact on him. I think it's just a racing deal. Jack Wood just came down on him a little bit. He crashed out of the race, bringing out the first caution. Then we go back racing in lap 14 with Zane Smith leading forward from the outside and Carson Osafar on the inside, and Zane Smith was able to get the race lead and started pulling away. Then the next caution race come out of lap 20 for Cannon Murphy, who basically backed it in the turn two wall while he's running in 31st position, bringing out the second caution. We then go back racing in lap 25 of the race with Zane Smith leading field from the outside and Corey Heim on the inside. Meanwhile, we actually saw Matt DiBenedetto actually have to come back down pit road later, I think, for basically loose lug nuts. So basically, we'd have Zane, Ryan Priest took the lead for a second away from Zane Smith, and then Zane Smith got back around him on the restart. And eventually, Zane Smith started pulling away, and he would come off the corner and win stage one here. Meanwhile, Colby Howard coming to the checker flag at stage one, he was spent from 18 position, was able to not run into problems. So as he came down pit row, we saw Ty Majeski only take two tires. He actually went to race all out pit row because of that. Meanwhile, Jesse Little would basically have his tire carrier fall and basically drop the tire, which a crew member basically chose the side. And basically, let's run out into pit road and get the tire, and we basically almost get in a lot of trouble over that. Maybe we get a penalty for that for the tire being gone. On the restart, Ty Majeski lead the field from the outside, and Zane Smith on the inside. Ty Majeski got a really good restart, but then eventually Zane Smith passed the lead, him going, I believe, in turn number one and started pulling away. Then Tanner Gray, who was actually trying to battle around for 15th position, he would basically hit the outside wall really, really hard due to losing a right front tire. And no caution would come out. We would then keep going green with Zane Smith leading the race. And then John Hernimacek basically had a battle with Carson Osfar from 8th. He comes down on Carson Osfar and brings out the caution. This one's on John Hernimacek. He basically tried to pull basically a block down on him. Carson was not happy with him. I bet John Hunter wasn't happy. But that was on John Hunter. He came down on him. Then we saw a little bit of strategy in this race for guys like Carson Osmar, Haley Deegan, Matt Benedetto, Chris Wright, Jesse Little. They all come down to row while the rest leaders decided to stay out. And Carson Osmar would get penalized for speeding on the exit of pit road as well. So on the race start, Zane Smith lead the field from the outside and Ryan Priest on the inside. It looked like Zane Smith was actually going to hold on to the lead like he had always pretty much all night long. But no, Ryan Priest got an amazing restart, a huge push for Christian Eggers, and got around him and was able to take the race lead from Zane Smith. And he never would relinquish lead for the rest of Stage 2. Zane Smith tried to catch him, but Ryan Priest would win Stage 2 here from Nashville. And then we basically see the next pit stops after the caution for Stage 2. Park Clearman decided to actually take two tires on the pit stop, and he would take the race lead. Basically, Chandler Smith would also get penalized for moving equipment off of pit road. We saw other drivers have some issues as well. Meanwhile, John Harry Nemechek was bouncing back a little bit. He actually had to come basically on pit road to change an axle, and unfortunately, this would take it pretty much out of contention as he would lose a lap. So on the restart, you had Rock Clergman lead the field from the outside and Ryan Priest on the inside. Ryan Priest gets a really, really strong restart and past Park Clergman is able to start pulling away. And then the next caution this race would come out on lap 119 for Tabadon, who spun off of, from 17th off of turn number four. Just got loose in the corner. He unfortunately spun out, bringing out the caution. Then we saw a little bit of strategy where the top 10 guys stayed out. Seven guys stayed out while the rest of the field basically came down pit road. And on the restart, you had Ryan Priest lead the field from the outside, and Christian Eck is on the inside, and Ryan Priest gets a really, really strong restart and is able to clear. Meanwhile, on that same lap, on the restart, Ben Rose basically had to go through the grass, and Chandler Smith nearly avoided him. We basically then saw side-by-side -side racing with 26 laps to go between Ryan Priest and Christian Eck, who were side-by-side, 
battling hard for the race lead, but eventually Ryan Priest got around him. And then with around 24 laps to go, the next cautionous race would come out for a multi-cart incident. Basically, they were three-wide going into turn number three, and Ty Majeski with the smart brain decided, hmm, I'm just going to go ahead and take a four-wide going into the corner and cause a four-wide move. We basically see Matt Benno get a little bit loose and unfortunately collected Corey Heim and Grant Infinger, and basically Ben Rose and Chinoseth also would get some damage. And all of them, unfortunately, would fall in the race except Ty Majeski. And I should say this. I don't know what Ty Majeski's doing there. The guy's been keeping his head on straight pretty much all season long. That was just a rookie mistake by Ty Majeski. It was just a really stupid and bad move by Majeski. You don't send a four right going into a corner. I think that was just a bad move on Majeski's part. And I hope he apologized to those guys because that was a really, really bad move on his part. I understand you're battling for a position. I know you had a fast truck, but you really shouldn't have made that move. That was a little bit over-aggressive in my honest opinion. We then go back racing with 16 laps to go, and we get the final caution of this race where Ryan Priest were at the inside and Christian Eggers on the outside. Haley Deegan, basically, who's having one of her best runs of the year so far, unfortunately, once again, would get dumped or get involved in a wreck. She, unfortunately, gets turned by Mass Gutierrez on the restart and spins into the outside wall and gets a ton of damage. What a shame for Haley Deegan. It seems like every time Haley Deegan's going to have a good run, something goes terribly wrong for her. She was having an amazing run in the race. She had a shot at a top 10. And unfortunately, Max Gutierrez, who's only in his second start, decided to be aggressive. Max basically said that she just slammed on the brakes. and basically got off the brakes a little bit and basically slowed down and checked up, which I don't think that was the case. She never lost a gap in front of the people in front of her, and he just ran into the back of her. But I'll cut Max a little bit of slack. It was unintentional. He did not mean to do it. It was just an unintentional incident. But it's just unfortunate, frustrating. It seems like every time Haley Egan's going to have a good run, and she's going to make a lot of points on owner's points tonight, something goes terribly wrong for her. So then we get to the final restart of this race where Ryan Priest basically leads the field from the inside and Christian Eggers has it on the outside. And Zay Smith gets the third after a great restart as well as a bottleneck. Ryan Priest starts to go ahead and pull away. However, in the later portion of this race before that, we have Park Clareman get into the wall. But basically, all of a sudden, near the end of this race, Zay Smith and Carson Osobar, Carson Osobar on fresher tires, but Zay Smith, who was on the same equal tires as Ryan Priest, he really started catching... Uh, Ryan Priest, and with down two or three laps to go, he was half a second back, and by the time it became a two to go, he was only two tenths of a second back. As it came to the white flag, it became a three race battle between Ryan Priest and Carson Osmar and Zane Smith. Zane Smith tries to sit on the inside as he tries to basically go to the inside on him, but unfortunately, he drives up the racetrack. Carson tries to go to the inside, but Ryan Priest starts to pull away. Carson has second for a second, but then eventually they start crossing over behind him for second. But it would not be enough for those two to catch him. And coming off the corner, Ryan Priest holds off the hard-charging Carson Hosobar and Zane Smith to pick up his first victory 2022 and his second straight victory here at Nashville. Ryan Priest had one of the best trucks. I think he and Zane Smith were the two clear fastest trucks in tonight's race. Congratulations to Ryan Priest. He deserves when he's been fast pretty much every single time he's been in the truck. I've had this race circle for him. I thought he was going to be a factor to win. I thought the other guy was going to win this race, but Ryan Priest absolutely deserves this victory. He's really underrated. I know he's trying to cover for one of those Cup Series rides, the 10 cars, especially going in the next year. Some of those guys that are potential ride, potential guys that could have gone to the ride off table now going into next year. I think he's got a shot to get the 10 car next year. Amazing run for Ryan Priest. Congratulations to him. So now let's go through the results and give you my score of tonight's race. So Ryan Priest picks up the victory. Zane Smith finished the second. Zane Smith had a bad piss stop lane in the race. It kind of dropped him back to around 8th or ninth position. But he recovers the second. I thought Zane Smith was actually going to catch him and pass him for this win. But gets, regardless, he gets a really strong second place finish. Zane Smith has been really fast all year. And now I believe is a regular season points leader after this race. So amazing run for Zane Smith. Carson Osmar finishes third. Really strong run for Carson tonight. He bounced back after some issues early in the race with some contact with John Hunter Nemechek. And still bounced back to very solid top five. I think the win is coming for Carson. He's been way too fast to not get a win at this point. And gets a really strong third place finish. Great run for him. Ty Majeski finished the fourth. I know he had that contact tonight with the drivers, which is unexcusable in my opinion, but he still had a great run regardless. He was up front most of the evening and gets another solid top five finish. I believe Ty Majeski at this point is now clinched a spot into the playoffs with pending inspection, of course. I think he's too many points now ahead to not clinch a spot at this point. Great of Ty Majeski in fourth. Stuart Friesen gets a very solid fifth pace place finish. Good run for him. Christian Agus finishes sixth. Good run for him. Tyler Ingram with a very solid top 10 run. He finishes in 7th. Matt Gutierrez. Now, I know Matt Gutierrez had some issues with Haley Deegan, 
But despite that, he ran top 15 and top 20 all night long. His truck was really, really good in qualifying and practice as well. It gets an awesome top 10 finish. I think he's got a lot of people on the radar and teams on the radar looking at a guy like him. I think he's someone that people could be looking at going forward. A very impressive run tonight. And I think maybe Austin Wessel should stay out for a couple more races so that we can see Max Gutierrez in the ride a little bit more. John Hurt Image, after, after basically having multiple issues in the night, he bounced back to very solid top 10 finish in ninth. Matt Crafton finished his 10th, a decent run for Crafton, just enough to basically hold on to the position where he's at. He finishes in 10th. Derek Cross finishes 11th. Derek Cross, a lot of the night inside the top 10. It made up, I think, 8 or 9 points, or 8 points tonight on a championship in the cutoff battle at this point. He's got a shot to make it. I know he lost 10 points for the race he even began, but he still made up some ground regardless on Matt Crafton. Ben Rose gets a 12th place finish. He just hasn't been a factor the last couple weeks. I don't know what's going on with him, but he has not been a factor the last two weeks. Chase Birdie finishes 13th. Dean Thompson with a solid top 15 in 14th place. Chandler Smith with another kind of disappointing run in 15th position. Colby Howard finishes in 16th. Chris Wright finishes in 17th. Blaine Perkins finishes in 18th. Jess Hill finishes 19th. And Park Kligerman, after, after, after having issues late in the race, he finishes in 20th. Caden Honeycutt with the Glory to God Racing Team. He gets a very solid top 25 finish. Great to see that for Caden. Caden is a very talented driver who's been racing in all forms of racing here. Good run for him in 21st for Glory to God Racing. Seth Parsons finishes in 22nd. Timmy O finishes 23rd. Law Sound finishes 24th. Spencer Boyd finishes 25th in tonight's race. Nick Lights in his debut finishes 26th. Tabo Dynam is having a decent run in tonight's race. Unfortunately, he had a tie, had some sparking issues. He finishes 27th. Haley Deegan finished 28th. What could have been first? She had a great run going tonight. It's a shame that she didn't get the finish she deserves. At some point, something's going to have to turn for her. Hopefully, the bad luck turns around for her. It seems like every time she's got a shot at something, something goes terribly wrong for her. Chris Hacker finishes 29th. Tanner Gray finishes 30th after his issues. Matt Benedetto, who could have had an amazing finish tonight, he finishes in 31st. He had a top five truck tonight. It's a shame what happened. Grant Enfinger finishes in 32nd, 33rd for Corey Heim, 34th for Cannon Murphy, 35th for Jack Wood, and Chase James finishes last in 36th, completing only one lap. So now I'll sort of all talk about my score of tonight's race and give you my thoughts on tonight's race. Really, this race was kind of a tale of two different stories. The first 100 flaps of the race generally was really, really quiet. There wasn't a lot that was happening, at least up front. I think the broadcast tonight was actually really, really solid. I think they were showing a lot of battles throughout the field when the leader wasn't a thing, and I think that's what makes the race sometimes really, really special. You don't have to always focus on the leader, and there was a lot of good battles throughout the field. But generally, outside of that, there was a lot of single foul in the race as well, and it was very, very difficult to pass. Even if you had fresh tires, it was very, very difficult to pass. Guys on old tires, it was still a major, major problem. But the end of the race is what really got good. You got a very solid finish, very similar to last year, and I think it made the race a little bit better than it would have had been had it been, you know, it had gone out the initial way. So for my score of tonight's race, I'm going to give it overall an 8 out of 10. I want to see a little more in the beginning of the race, but the end of the race was really, really solid, and tonight's race is going to get an 8 out of 10. So, anyway, that is going to be for tonight's NASCAR Camp World Truck Series race view from the track of National Super Speedway. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Notification on be notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support me on page as well. Let's get you below with that and comment with your thoughts on tonight's race. What are your thoughts on tonight's race? Let me know below. Let me know your score in the comments below. And congratulate Ryan Priest on picking up his first victory of the 2022 season. Let me know in the comments below. Tomorrow on the channel will be the Astrax race view from South Boston Speedway, followed by Sunday pending weather, of course, the National Cup Series race view, more than likely that race should not have an issue getting done regardless if it has lights or not. And then Monday, we're going to have a NASCAR news video on the channel, and we got other content that's on the way over the next couple of weeks that I think you're going to like. So anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys next time for some more great, awesome NASCAR and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.